Hi, my name is James from Teach Bitcoin, and in this video, we're going to revisit Segregated Witness, which is an extremely important part of the Bitcoin protocol and its development history. Now, although it's been about a year and a half since Segregated Witness has been activated, it can still be pretty hard to understand the underlying conceptual design choices of the Segregated Witness upgrade. It was a big part of the block size debate, but in reality, it was designed to achieve two closely related objectives. Firstly, it fixed transaction malleability. And secondly, it provided a step increase in the confirmation capacity of the Bitcoin network. Now, let's first start looking at transaction malleability. Transaction malleability means that the transaction data can be changed without affecting its validity. However, by modifying the transaction data, the transaction ID necessarily changes as well, since it is simply a hash of the serialized transaction data. So, if an unconfirmed transaction is received and modified by an intermediary, it can potentially be mined before the original transaction, and therefore will also be confirmed and indexed under a different transaction ID. This is a challenge for the sender of the transaction, who will have a much harder time identifying whether the broadcast transaction was confirmed or confirmed in a modified form. Transaction malleability occurs in the input scripts of a transaction. The reason why the input script can be modified is because it is the only part of the transaction data structure which is never committed to the signature. In fact, when computing the signature hash, which is then signed by the ECDSA algorithm, the complete input script does not yet exist, since this includes the signature itself. So instead, the previous output script is placed into the input script field during signing. So given the input script can be modified, there are two general ways this is possible without affecting transaction validity. Firstly, the DUR signature is malleable itself. Historically, it suffered from open SSL encoding ambiguity, meaning the same R and S values could be encoded differently and still be valid. There's also an inherent ECDSA malleability, which enables the complement of the R and S values to be equally valid. Neither DUR malleability exploits requires knowledge of the private key, but these signature malleability issues were mostly solved with a strict DUR encoding, described in BIP 66. However, besides the signature itself, the input script operations can also be modified without affecting validity. For example, we can add a push data to the stack and subsequently drop it again without affecting the stack state for later operations. This is a malleability issue that cannot be easily solved. Now, what Segregated Witness did was come up with a smart way to move out the entire script data to another data structure, enforcing an empty input script field to solve malleability. This new data structure is called the Witness, and this is where the previous input script information has now been moved to. The transaction ID, however, is still derived from the old transaction serialization format, which strips the same transaction of its Witness field. So now the transaction malleability has been solved, let us look at how a witness transaction is validated. So what we have here is a previous transaction and a spending witness transaction. The previous transaction's output we are spending has a witness script. In this example, it is a pay to witness public key hash output script, which consists of a 0 byte data push and a 20 byte public key hash. The empty input script and data pushes from the witness script result in a valid stack state, since the top stack element is non-zero. However, no signature validation has occurred yet. This happens in a separate step. In this second step, a witness-aware script machine will recognize an empty input script and witness script pattern, and initiate a separate script run. In this evaluation, the pay to witness pubkey hash script is expanded to the well-known pay to pubkey hash script. Now the witness data and resulting pay to pubkey hash script can be validated, just like the spending of a regular pay to pubkey hash output. In the case of an older non-witness aware script machine or node, the second step is necessarily omitted and the validation can still be successful without checking signatures. This is what makes segregated witness a soft for compatible upgrade. So now that we've fixed malleability, let's consider the increase in confirmation capacity which segregated witness enables. The previous 1 megabyte block limit still applies with the introduction of segregated witnesses. For the computation of the 1 megabyte limit, the witness transaction and flags are simply stripped, and the serialization in its original transaction format is used. The 1 megabyte block limit therefore only applies to non-witness data. 
So in order to provide an upper bound to the witness data in each block, the concept of weight was introduced together with a block weight limit of 4 million. The weight of a transaction is computed as follows. The transaction data is serialized in both witness and original transaction formats. The weight of the transaction is the byte sum of the two serializations, where the bytes of the original serialization format are weighted higher by a factor of 3. Now, for a non-witness transaction or a witness transaction with a proportionally small witness, its weight approaches the fourfold of the old serialization byte size. The 4 million weight limit applied to a block filled with such transactions is equivalent to the previous 1 megabyte block limit and does not yet result in higher confirmation capacity. However, for a witness transaction where the witness is a proportionally large part of the transaction, the weight is approximately just a quarter of a non-witness transaction with comparable in and outputs. So if all the transaction data were mostly witness data, the 4 million block weight limit now approaches a 4 times block confirmation capacity increase compared to non-witness transactions. In conclusion, the increased confirmation capacity is not really a scaling feature, as block sizes are still capped and independent on transactions being broadcast. However, it provides a step increase in confirmation capacity and also a very clear incentive for users to transact with witness transactions, effectively reducing real-world transaction malleability. I hope this video was helpful for you, and I encourage you to check out the related BIPs for further study. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.